In today's class, we are going to learn how we can get the FFT from the time domain data and we will talk how we can further convert the frequency domain data into the time domain data using the inverse Fourier transformation. So let's start that this is my code. These two lines are the standard line and now I am creating a harmonic function. To create the harmonic function, I have considered a time step of dt. If you will recall, whenever we are talking about a harmonic function, sampling rate is very important. But here again, I started my signal with considering a time step and my frequency and frequency of my signal is 5 hertz and the 8 hertz. If you want to correlate what is the sampling rate, so the sampling rate is nothing but just the inverse of your time step. So in the given case, my sampling rate is 100 and I am visualizing the signal of frequency 5 hertz and the 8 hertz. So the given sampling rate or the time step is sufficient to visualize the frequency of my signal. If you are more interested, you, you can watch my previous video on the sampling rate. So here my time step is 0 0.01 and I have created the time vector and this is my harmonic function. If you will see carefully, the harmonic function is the combination of two frequency. The first signal is having amplitude 5 and the frequency 5 and the second signal is having amplitude 10 and the frequency of the signal is 8. If I will run my code up to line 8, I will be able to visualize the signal that how the signal will look like. So here we can see that our harmonic signal is the combination of two frequency and therefore it is not a pure sine wave. Vertical axis is indicating the amplitude of my signal and horizontal axis is indicating the time. The total time is from 0 to 2 seconds. So you can find here that the x scale is indicating 0 and it is ending up to the 2 second value. Next task is I want to do the Fourier transform. When we are using the MATLAB, there is a standard commands available in the MATLAB to convert a time domain signal into frequency domain and that command is FFT. So here is the block of my Fourier transform and right here. So this is my H1. Then I have created the sampling rate which is actually just inverse of your uh, time step. So sampling rate is 1 by dt. L1 is indicating the length of my entire signal and this is a new command. I have not discussed this command previously. Length tells you what is the total length of your signal. In my case, I can see here that the H1 is having 201 data with one row. So if I will simply say length of H1, you will find that the length of the H1 is 201. We need the length of our signal to calculate the Fourier transform. This is the variable where I am storing the Fourier transform. FFT is the standard MATLAB command and here H1 is the signal for which I am calculating the Fourier transform. L1 is the length of the signal and I have multiplied this with the 2 by L1. I will not recommend you to go in the detail why we are multiplying it. This is the actually the algorithm of FFT. FFT indicates for the fast Fourier transform. FFT is an algorithm where when you want to calculate the Fourier transform of any data, you have to give the input in this systematic manner. Next line is actually a line which is going to create the x-axis. Please understand. When you will run this command, you are going to create the Fourier transform of this data but there is no information available about the x-axis because it is going to give me the y-axis and for what particular frequency a particular data has to be plotted. So, so here I have created this frequency axis which is ultimately indicating the x-axis of my Fourier transform. It is starting at value 0. The second term is indicating the increment in the frequency. So I can say that it is actually indicating the DF value. When I am giving a plot, what is the increment in the frequency axis will be defined by this term. And if you will read the term carefully, you will find that here I am using the term T and N. T and N means what is the end value of my T vector. 
so your frequency resolution i would say the df is the frequency resolution depends on the total length of sample for example in the given case the sample is up to 2 second it is not dependent to what is the resolution or the time step of the sample the time step is actually tells the fourier transform the, the total length or the total frequency axis but what would be the increment in the frequency axis that has to be governed by the total length of the sample if i will take the data for 10 seconds the df value will be smaller we will do it in detail so here you please understand that this statement is the increment in the frequency axis and the third statement is telling us that what would be the end value of my frequency here you should recall the nyquist criteria as per the nyquist criteria that if i want to visualize or capture or record a frequency of 5 hertz my sampling rate should be minimum double so that here what i am doing again i want to visualize the frequency so i can only visualize the frequency up to the frequency of half of your sampling rate for example your sampling rate is 100 hertz or 100 sample per second then you will be able to visualize the frequency up to 50 hertz only and the last line i am just subtracting one value because i am starting this vector from the zero otherwise what will happen this entire vector length of this entire vector will not be the half of the length of the total input data may be possible whatever i have discussed just now is not clear to you don't worry if you are going to use these standard lines you will be able to get the fourier transform and that is a standard procedure so you should not worry that what is the philosophy behind but i just want to clear you that what is the significance of these individual terms and this is the output of my code this is my time domain signal and this is my frequency domain signal if i will go in i will check the point value using this cursor the first value is indicating that this point is corresponding to the 5 hertz and the magnitude is somewhat 5 similarly i can take the second data point and the second data point is indicating that the magnitude of this is 9.81 and the frequency is 8 hertz the same you can cross verify what data you have given your data was having two frequencies one is the 5 hertz and another one is the 8 hertz another important thing you should remember here when you are just applying the fft the output will not be the real number it will be actually the imaginary and real number both but what i am doing here i am again just extracting the absolute value so when you will do the plot of the fourier transform you should remember that you you should start with the absolute term and then i am plotting my fft underscore h1 here also you should see the length of the fft h1 signal is what the length of the fft h1 signal is 201 but what is the length of this frequency the length of the frequency is just 100 so what i need to do i have to plot the fft data only for the half length MATLAB is actually solving the problem and giving the Fourier transform for the entire vector. If I will not do this expression and simply I will go and I will say that the plot the absolute value of my FFT underscore H1 data. So you can see here that it is exactly a mirror image. If you will go and you will check the data here, you will find that this value is x is equal to 11. When you will go and you will check here, this value is 192 and it is ending at the value 201. So what we do actually, we only want to see the half portion of this graph, which is up to the 100 hertz because the remaining portion is just the mirror image. Please remember, this is actually the philosophy of the fast Fourier transform algorithm. We are not going in the detail of the algorithm, but what is important for us, we need to understand that what would be the output of this FFT command and how we can visualize the signal using the plot command. And this is my signal and this is the combination of two frequency. One frequency is 5 hertz, another frequency is 8 hertz. And this is the plot of the Fourier transform. If you want to go back to the time domain data from the frequency domain data, then you need to do the inverse Fourier transform. So here I am explaining 
how we can do the inverse Fourier transform. Doing the in inverse Fourier transform, the command in the MATLAB is simple IFFT. But here also what you need to do, if you will go and you will check line 13 here. In line 30, I have done the Fourier transform. For that, I have given what vector I want to use and then the length of the vector. Then I have multiplied this with the 2 by L1. The opposite we will do when we are doing the inverse Fourier transform. In the inverse Fourier transform, I am giving the data which is in the frequency domain. Then I am multiplying this data with the same length of the vector. And then I am multiplying L1 by 2 instead of 2 by L1. When I will run this command, the MATLAB is again going to create the data in the time domain. But please remember, plot for plotting the data, I have used the absolute value of my Fourier transform. But for doing the inverse Fourier transform, I have not done any absolute app command. I have not used absolute command. Whatever I have calculated using the FFT command, same has been given to the IFFT command. And you can see now when I will run the entire code, we will find that there will be two graphs. The last graph will be same as the first graph. So here is the output. You can see that this is the third val third plot. This is my second plot and this is my first plot. The first plot is was my actual data. This is my Fourier transform and this is the output of the inverse Fourier transform and you can cross check these two are exactly same. But let me tell you for a standard signal what I have created pure sine waves you can get this data very clearly but when you are working with the real life data if you are measuring the vibration or the acoustic signal from a machinery and that time you are doing the FFT and the IFFT you must be careful but here I am not going in that much detail this preliminary understanding is good to you to kick start your programming and doing the FFT and the IFFT the last thing IFFT is also important to do filtering suppose i want to remove a particular frequency component from my signal so what i will do first i will convert the signal into fourier transform within the fourier transform i will just manually remove these data in the given case suppose i am having two frequency signal one is corresponding to the fifth 5 hertz another one is corresponding to 8 hertz and suppose i want to remove the 5 hertz component what I can do, I will go back to the, my frequency vector. And what is my frequency vector? This FFT underscore H1 is my F, uh, Fourier transform vector. So what I will do manually, I will convert some of the values into zero and then I will give it into the IFFT so that I will get only the particular frequency component. This part we are going to cover in our next lecture is specifically we will create a signal which will have multiple frequencies and then step by step we will remove certain frequency component and again we will do the inverse Fourier transform. Thank you.